I mean, the colors, they kind of work, don't they? Hello, Emmett Ryan here from Ball in Europe, and today it's all about the Greens, the reigning defending champions of EuroLeague, Panathinaikos. I'm going to discuss the ins, the outs, and the outlook for their roster. Before we get right into it, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really, really does help the channel. We're trying to get out to as many people as possible this coming season, and now let's get to it. So the ins, like, I mean, there's not many of them. They just happen to all be big people in terms of their profile, their names, their reputation, their basketball ability. So let's get to it. Shedi Osman, Omer Yurtsevin, uh, or Yurtsevin, I always get the pronunciation slightly off there. I think it's Yurtsevin, uh, and Lorenzo Brown. So, yeah, it says a lot about the summer that, like, let's be honest, we stopped talking about the Lorenzo Brown signing a long time ago, it feels like, even though at the time it was a pretty big deal. Uh, you know, uh, he was on that Maccabi side, which helped, which really, really forced uh, Panathinaikos to the brink in the playoffs. And uh, now he's gone to Panathinaikos itself. So, yeah, you know, that was kind of a big deal. But it's suddenly then the Yurtsevin signing happened. A lot more people iffy on that than I expected. Like, to me, it's a fairly straightforward one, especially given the roster issues uh, the Panathinaikos had at the five behind Lesor, just to be clear, like, obviously at the five, when it comes to the first uh, starting five, uh, number five, you were absolutely fine, putting it mildly. But, you know, you want to have someone to spell for him, and you got a guy who most teams would be happy to start to spell. Uh, so, yeah, obviously great, great signing, especially in the situation. And then the last one, the highest profile, and... I feel safe to say, for everyone in Europe, the most surprising returnee of all the returnees, Shetty Osman. And some of you might argue Fernier. I would say Shetty entirely because of age, or relatively speaking, that he is still under 30. And I felt that he would want to try staying in the NBA for a bit longer. He was putting up the stats of a player you expect to be in the NBA. I mean, I've done a video all about the Shetty signing already. But yeah, I just felt that, like, you know, obviously great signing Panathinaikos when you got him. I'm just surprised he was available for anyone in Europe. Like, and obviously great work for Panathinaikos to get him. So yeah, the ins get obviously a big, Panathinaikos did very well here, a reaction from me. And let's get on to those who have departed. And we return to the notes now for this one because, uh, you know, with all the roster breakdowns, I've been reading off my notes deliberately uh, because there's so much detail to get through. So the outs, Oleg Balcharovsky, Nioklas Avdalas, Nikos Chukas, Luka Vildoza and Lefteris Mansukas. So the two that stand out there are Balcharovsky and Vildoza. With Balcharovsky, it was simply an element of roster spots. Uh, he probably was always going to be, if there was a certain level of signing made, the next guy out the door. And he's obviously gone on to Unicaja, where he'll play Basketball Champions League this year. So that's doubly great for Panathinaikos, because uh, one, they seem to have left on very good terms with him. And two, he's not going to be playing against them in any competition this year. So you don't have to worry about him raising his game against his former team or anything like that. So, and I think he's going to do great with Unicaja. Like, they've got a lot of big, big fellas in their BCL team this year. Like, woof, woof, woof. But yeah, it's a loss, but I mean... It's not one you're crying over, let's be honest, Greens fans. Vildoza is a weird one in that if you had told me at the start of last season that Vildoza would only last a year in Panathinaikos, I'd have had two possible reactions. One was, ooh, who got him? Who put, fried him away? And the other, which was the more likely one and is the one it turned out, was, wow, something went wrong for him at Pau. And it is kind of something went wrong for him at Pau. Like Ergen Ataman obviously spoke very kindly of Vildoza when he left. Uh, but he was pretty clear-cut about his views about him during the season that he just wasn't delivering enough, particularly in Greek League games, uh, to merit being a feature player in their EuroLeague outfit. And as a result, uh, you know, he's gone. And it says, I'm not going to give this a positive grade, but not a very, very negative grade either, on a loss purely because, like, he wasn't featuring, which is why he doesn't get a very negative grade. But the reason he doesn't get a positive is he has gone to your direct rivals, Olympiakos, who I have, of course, in my power rankings, which should be linked to somewhere there. Uh, I've ranked them directly below Panathinaikos 1 and 2. 
in that video uh, out of my power rankings for the season. So, you know, having anyone motivated, you know, that's left to go against you, never the best. You, no matter what he did for you, you don't want to give a guy, you know, that extra bulletin board material. It's just the way it is uh, in sports in general, like not just basketball. But of course, you've done it to where the player has gone to the absolute ultimate rival for Panathinaikos. <laughs> so I think, yeah, he's going to try and show out in uh, the two Euroleague games against you all. But again, on the holy outs, I don't think we can really call this anything particularly bad for Panathinaikos. Like, I think it was generally business they should have been doing, and they did it well. And again, like with Balcerovsky, I feel that if they ever want to go back to him, the relationship is still very, very good. And so that will be an option there. I doubt they will want to go back to him, but it's always good to end on good terms with any player you lose. I mean, that's just good business, period. If you can get rid of a player, which is essentially what Panathinaikos did, and he doesn't have ill will towards you, people generally look well on that in other players as well. So now we get to the meat. The real reason you're here is the look and the outlook for Panathinaikos with this roster. So the wild part for me is, you know, when you consider the level of players Panathinaikos have brought in, only one of them is likely to be in the starting five, and that's Shetty Osman. Like, he's likely the only starter, because, you know, you look at him and you go, well, what's the starting five going to be? Like, you know, I'm going to follow. I'm going to agree with Eurohoops here. Slukas, Kendrick Nunn, Shetty. Uh, Dinos Matoglu and Matthias Asor is likely your starting five and that's what Eurohoops was down and I go yep I, I think Eurohoops are perfectly correct there with their assessment uh, I would say that'll likely be that um, they'll all work lovely with Shetty like what I love about Shetty apart from him obviously being very good at basketball is that he is very versatile as well so yeah I think that's very obvious but that doesn't mean the other guys are irrelevant just to be clear like uh, Lorenzo Brown will add so much to the small ball possibilities. We've mentioned Slukas and Nunn, throwing Jerry and Grant there as well. When you're going three guard sets, maybe moving Shetty to the four, who knows? Uh, like, you know, if you're going small ball, like, yeah, you know, Lorenzo, he can just spot in at as regular point guard in normal sets, just to be clear. But also, you know, he is will fit in neatly and nicely in any three guard sets. So again, I like this uh, for you guys, that is. I just, when I see, do I see good business? I see good business. The depth also means that Ataman can really, really mix up his looks. Uh, like your Savin can switch between just spelling for Lasor or playing alongside him in a double big lineup, uh, which, you know, is important. Like I've mentioned before, that having the right fit to spell for Lasor was the obvious thing Panathinaikos needed to fix. And I feel like your Savin, they've. They've done that. They've got the fix they want. And like I'm doing this, and I still haven't mentioned several players on this roster that I expect to feature heavily. Gregonis, Papetru, Juancho, Hernan Gomez. Okay, maybe Juancho less than the other two. But still, you know, I haven't mentioned them. And there's like, you know, there's depth. And uh, yeah, like there's a reason I have Panathinaikos at the top of my power rankings going into this season. And it's because I feel in terms of depth, and variety of look. Like, it's not just that they have, you know, great options going down the bench, going down multiple levels at different positions. I think Lorenzo came out and said something, I've never been on a team with this many guys who can just go out and score 20. And I can kind of see what he means, like, because it's not just about individual ability, it's about versatility of what is in this roster. Like, you can go very big and you can go very small and you can adapt and give so many different looks uh, throughout the season. Which is, again, because normally, and this is no disrespect at all, just to be clear, if I consider you a very, very high contender, it's a lot harder for me to see you as a fun team. Like, uh, obviously, there was Cool Ephes, that great era, same head coach. And, uh, you know, but more often than not, if you're a very, very good team, we expect you to play very good basketball. Like, you know, so the grade for you to be considered fun is higher because you're already considered very good. Uh, whereas, say, if you're a mid-tier team or even a bad team, but you do some cool stuff, like, that bar is a, little, a lot lower, you know, to, to clear. But, yeah, Panthers and Icos are obviously a very, very good basketball team who have real potential to be one of the most fun teams to watch in the early, which is very rare to say, again, about a team I expect to be right in there in the mix to win it all. Uh, I'm sure Panathinaikos fans, like, being fun is secondary to winning, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's the view you should have, but I like to enjoy the basketball I watch. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know, crazy, right? Uh, I, I, you know, I know, it's like, because it's just, 
a thing. I, I like I, I do this as part of my living, and I want to be able to enjoy the work I do. So knowing that, uh, at least believing that Panathinaikos, a team I'm expect to be covering a lot this season, both here and on the main site, are likely to be fun to watch. Strangely enough, that makes me happy that I think I'm going to enjoy watching them play basketball. So yeah, yeah, I think Panathinaikos is going to be very good. I think they're obviously one of the few teams I believe can win it all this year. And um, they, I mean, I'll be stunned if we don't see them in the final four. Uh, beyond stunned, to be honest. Like, it would be one of the most biggest surprises of the season if Pau don't get through the playoffs. Uh, uh, one of the biggest surprises in a long, long time in terms of going back several seasons if this Pau team doesn't do it. So, yeah, Panathinaikos, you're going to be very, very good. And uh, there's a reason you're favourites to win it all. So, if you haven't already, please subscribe. We do videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh... The Friday video, which I'm actually recording directly after I'm recording this because I'm away on a basketball and other sports trip uh, for the rest of the week, is going to be an Ask Me Anything. So I have taken a bunch of questions from a load of people and I'm going to answer them all in a video. And so that'll be coming out on Friday. It'll be telling you all about my interest in basketball, who I think is going to do well in EuroLeague this year. Uh, things I wish I could change from the past. Things I would love to see in the future. Those sort of questions have all come in. And uh, I hope you come along Friday and watch that. Uh, but until then, uh, I will see you soon.